If you recall, in traditional networking, when we teach you computer networks at the undergraduate level, we introduce the concept of network as uh, either a local area network or a metropolitan area network or a wide area network. And so far, uh, we actually thought about uh, uh, Ethernet as, uh, as a technology that was uh, meant to be at the local area. Uh, but uh, the concept of Metro Ethernet is to scale up the overall coverage of Ethernet to Metropolitan. And it's known as Metro Ethernet or the Carrier Ethernet. So in this module, we'd look at uh, the need which governs uh, Metro Ethernet adoption, uh, some interesting issues which emerge, and uh, the unique characteristics which are expected out of Metro Ethernet. And this would certainly be uh, achieved through adopting certain modifications to Ethernet as such. Um, first of all, when we look at IEEE 802.3 and Ethernet, these two uh, uh, medium access control technologies are quite similar. And uh, uh, these have been around for a very long time um, on the access side. Um, but on the core side, uh, most of the infrastructure that the telecom operators provided, both at the core and the long haul transport networks was the STH, Synchronous Digital Hierarchy. It was TDM based uh, um, multiplexing technique that allowed the uh, um, um, different uh, users to uh, aggregate their traffic. Certainly there was a requirement to achieve certain bit rate by using bit stuffing and uh, padding and certain other means. But anyways, uh, TDM based uh, multiplexing technique was performing very good and it had its own advantages. Uh, but uh, since Ethernet basically is a technology that has been there on the on the on the access side for a very long time. So the Metro Ethernet uh, forum uh, as uh, mandated by the by the ITUT um, uh, started working on the development of uh, Ethernet as the uh, last mile or couple of last miles technology. So it means now the scope is no more restricted to uh, 100 meters or 200 meters that we typically assume in a local area network, but it had to now be considered for such large geographical coverage. Um, the benefits surely which were expected out of uh, Metro Ethernet adoption were uh, that uh, it is already there on the on the core network. Different service providers have their internal architecture based on Ethernet and the equipment is low cost and uh, the Ethernet technology uh, requires a minimum uh, maintenance and operational cost. So with these benefits, uh, Metro Ethernet is uh, now all set to be adopted. However, uh, there are certain uh, issues and uh, certain desirable characteristics which are expected out of Metro Ethernet. Um, first of all, uh, Ethernet is uh, a probabilistic uh, uh, medium access uh, control scheme. So the Ethernet end users uh, always envy the performance of TDM based networks. So once Metro Ethernet had to be provided over large geographical area and as a probable replacement to the uh, time division multiplex uh, technologies like STH. So Ethernet users actually were expecting that uh, we'd be given same level of performance uh, that uh, our uh, uh, past technology uh, was like uh, uh, STH. Um, so actually Ethernet had to be rehashed and it had to be rethought altogether. And it, uh, the network which is cover, covering an area of few miles uh, is a Metro Ethernet network or the carrier Ethernet. So uh, it is equivalently known as MEN or carrier Ethernet CE. The required characteristics of uh, uh, Metro Ethernet are that it has to support scalability. As we know uh, that uh, Ethernet is a probabilistic scheme and uh, the efficiency of Ethernet is directly dependent upon the total number of users which are active in LAN. So uh, now that uh, lots and lots of customers had to be accommodated and uh, the customers are enterprises, each enterprise with, with its own internal network. 
the network operators had to think uh, to provide their broadband access to many subscribers in a given metropolitan or a geographical area. The next concern is uh, providing quality of service. Uh, surely, comparing it to a deterministic scheme, uh, Ethernet is uh, not very good in providing quality of service. Uh, so, the expectation that naturally emerges is that the carrier Ethernet should now provide the same performance guarantees in terms of throughput and delay. Incidentally, uh, throughput and delay are never guaranteed in Ethernet as such because uh, it depends on the user um, uh, occupancy and the uh, user traffic. Um, so uh, it now it had to be thought. So um, uh, the TDM based access was the gold standard. So the quality of service actually had to be brought closer to and if if, if not better to the TDM based uh, lease lines on the on the access side. Uh, because when a certain corporate or an enterprise subscri subscribes to a service through certain service level agreement or SLA, then the expectations of user are uh, quite high. So providing quality of service commensurate to those expectations is a challenge. Uh, then comes reliability. Um, typically in telecom sector, the core and the access uh, uh, network uh, uh, equipment that is on the uh, central office uh, is there with some um, redundancy uh, to achieve a very high availability, uh, say five nines. Uh, so five nines availability actually means a downtime of five minutes uh, a, a year. Uh, that actually means that if you want to provide the same level of reliability to the, uh, to the uh, metropolitan uh, ethernet network, then it actually has to be compared to how STH provides reliability. Um, and uh, if, uh, if at all there is a link breakage, then uh, some kind of uh, uh, link redundancy has to be provided. And the recovery time from that uh, failure, that is the mean time to repair, sh uh, should not be deviating much from the 50 milliseconds uh, uh, benchmark. Uh, then we have the service management. Uh, service management actually implies that uh, once a certain contract has been signed between a service provider and a service consumer, then uh, continuous monitoring of uh, service provisioning has to be ensured to determine the quality of experience. So there are certain tools which are needed to monitor the performance live. Um, uh, so there are certain parameters as we earlier agreed on throughput, delay, uh, jitter, packet loss, etc. Uh, so these um, services are observed and monitored against uh, these parameters uh, uh, for the end users. So it means that the service management has to be done now on the access side. And lastly, um, uh, backward compatibility uh, that we term as the emulation of TDM service. Since uh, uh, the lease lines are still around, uh, which are based on the time division multiplexing. And uh, these lease lines are still an option for some of the uh, uh, corporates and uh, enterprises. So it means that uh, the uh, Metro Ethernet network or the carrier Ethernet actually has to integrate in a very transparent manner with these lease lines. Uh, so the service should not be affected uh, end to end, whether it is being uh, uh, provisioned between two endpoints, one on the on the Metro Ethernet network and the other one on a lease line. 